Today we'll try to understand about harmonics in power supply. Most of you probably know that the electric power for buildings are in the form of alternating current. That means the signal is sinusoidal, and the frequency in Hong Kong is 50 Hz. But very often the power supply contains harmonics, which are higher order frequencies. Here, let us explore how these harmonics can be made or removed. With me here is a power source that can give out a 50 Hz AC signal with about a 6 volt. And on the right hand side is an oscilloscope that we can use to uh, visualize the signal. The first thing we're going to do is to connect the output of the power source to the probe of the oscilloscope. So you can see how the signal looks like. So we do this something like this. Now this is connected. What we can do is now turn on the power source. You see in here, this is now the signal. We can take a look more closely at the signal. The x-axis corresponds to time, and each division is 5 milliseconds. So the signal has a period of 20 milliseconds, corresponding to 50 Hz. The y-axis corresponds to voltage, and each division is 5 volt. So we can see that the peak-to-peak -peak voltage is about 18.8 volt, then corresponding to a root mean square voltage of 6.65 volt. You may notice that the signal is not a pure sine curve, as there are some kinks in it. The oscilloscope is able to do a Fourier transform of the signal, so we can see the harmonics, like here. After the Fourier transform, we can see the frequencies inside the signal. The main peak at 50 Hz corresponds to the fundamental frequency. But we can also see peaks at 350, 450, 650, and 750 Hz. These correspond to the 7th, 9th, 13th, and 15th harmonics. So our power source already has some harmonics inside. Let us put the power source to use. Here are our 410 ohm resistors connected in series. Now we're going to connect the power source to it. And also the probes for the oscilloscope. Probe number 1 goes to the, the input voltage. And then probe number 2, we connect it to the last three resistors. Like this. When we turn on the power source, like this, we will see that the input signal, the one in yellow, and the output signal, the one in blue, are in phase. Because the resistor is linear, it does not affect the harmonics. We can see it in the uh, Fourier transform. This is the harmonics for the input signal in here. We can see the higher harmonics. If we change to the output signal, you will see the same harmonics staying there. This is because the resistors are linear loads. We will now add a dial to the system to see how it will change the output voltage. Probe number 1 is still the input voltage. This is the voltage profile with the diode and the resistors. The input voltage is the one with the yellow line. The output voltage is the blue one. Because of the diode, which only allows positive current to go through, you will see in here that a uh, voltage becomes zero for part of the curve. The nonlinear diode changed the shape of the waveform, so the harmonics will be different. We can see it in the Fourier transform. This is the input power source, and this is the one after the diode. Here are the input and output signals again. The input signal is the same as before with some of the 7th and 9th harmonics. But for the output signal, we see the 2nd, 4th, 6th and 8th harmonics coming out. So we have created different harmonics with the diode. Sometimes the non-linear load can even cause harmonics in the power supply. So you may wonder what are the problems of harmonics in power systems. First, it will create higher cable loss as the resistance increase with frequency, known as skin effect. Second, it will cause overheating of transformers. The impedance of the winding increase, and so there are more reactive power and higher current in the transformer. At the same time, eddy current also increases with frequencies. Third, harmonics can cause overheating and vibration of motors. There are other effects of harmonics, such as trippin harmonics, unwanted resonance, and also logical faults in digital circuits. In order to remove harmonics, we can use a low-pass filter. Basically, we put in an extra capacitor into the circuit. Since the resistors and capacitor are in series, the impedance looks like this. And the output voltage depends on the resistance and also the reactance of the capacitor. 
When the frequency is small, the reactance of the capacitor is large. That means the output voltage goes close to the input voltage. When the frequency is large, the reactance is small, so the output voltage is close to zero. What it means is that the low pass filter will only allow low frequency to go through and also cut off the high frequency signals. To remove the harmonics, now we're going to create a low pass filter with a 100 microfarad capacitor, like this. The output signal is now the voltage across the capacitor. This is now the signal with the low pass filter. What we can see in here is initially the input signal, the one in yellow, is not really sinusoidal, but afterwards the one in blue is more sinusoidal. We can see it in the Fourier transform. Uh, the input signal looks something like this, with higher harmonics here and here. Uh, if you look at the one after the capacitor, this is what the uh, frequency section looks like. Uh, we can get rid of all the high harmonics except the 50 Hz in here. To look carefully at the input and output signal, they are phase shifted by about an angle of 40 degrees. The input signal has the original harmonics from the power source. We can now see that the harmonics are suppressed in the output signal. I hope this gives you some understandings about harmonics in power systems in terms of how we can generate them and remove them. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.